Welcome to No Match for a Blaster, a Star Wars role-playing podcast, Episode 9, Shifting Sands. I'm your host and newly minted star YouTuber, Edo Davis. That's right, we have a YouTube channel now. Be sure to subscribe to us there if you prefer to listen to your podcast at your computer. If you're new here, welcome! No Match for a Blaster is an actual play podcast featuring the Morality Plays crew playing the Star Wars role-playing system by Fantasy Flight Games. Before we continue, I'd like to give a shout out to our amazing and talented artists, Jasmine McLeod at Jackal Designs for making our awesome new icon art. That's J-A-K-K-A-L Designs. To see more great stuff, look her up on Facebook. And thank you, Jas. As per usual, if you're enjoying our antics so far, please consider reviewing us on iTunes. It only takes a minute, and reviews go a long way to help new listeners discover us. So, without any further ado, let's get back to the moon of Hoban and our heroes. Previously, on No Match for a Blaster. After a formidable trial beneath the surface of the moon, the ancient force-wielding cyborg is left buried beneath a mass of duracrete. The marshal and his deputies, however, have taken an evening to recover from their ordeal. But after a fitful rest, our heroes may discover that Hoban is not yet safe after all. Yep, there's there's the light smell of star pot. It's not super strong. You exit the ship, you go through. There's red Han Solo cups everywhere. There's a random like kid's shoe. You know that kind of thing. Whenever you have a whole bunch of family and kids and stuff, they just they just somehow make the place their own within the short amount of time there is. And you walk out. It's a crisp dawn morning on Hoban. Everything's unnervingly calm. What the crift did you do to my ship? Not so loud. <laughs> we haven't even had it 12, 12 hours. 12 hours. And look at this. She picks up a cup and just throws it out onto the lawn. Kamaya, These are all over the place. Kamaya walks past her as she's grouching about the ship. What is it? I'm, what is wrong with you? I'm, I'm going to get coffee. What? Uh, what is it? Calf? calf. Yeah. Calf. I'm get some calf. No, need calf. But it's still Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope so. Um, like, Mom put on a fresh pot of calf. Go over to her house. Dang it. And she just goes in there and started mumbling to herself and griping. Rousts whatever cousin is left in there. Rooster, get out. R- Rooster is standing in front of your like super classy, massive hollow projector and is like literally miming along with himself being projected. He's like, this is the coolest thing! Yeah! I give him, I give him a shove and then press the off button so the whole ship goes quiet. <laughs> Rooster, get off my ship. Fine. But just so you know, you can't quiet the blood-curdling cry of the universe itself and that is what I tap into. I, I know, but didn't we all agree <laughs> That your blood curdling cry would happen at the barn on the weekends? Hmm. Yes, we did. Okay, so get off my ship. This isn't the barn. But yeah, it's full of cow. It's it's full, it's full of nerfs, though. Like, then negotiate a better deal next time. I don't care. Look, and this bottle. Yeah. This bottle of what you all call alcohol. God, you kids are gonna burn it. You're gonna kill yourselves with this poison. But here, take it with you. You know what? Drink it. Drink it all up. I don't care. Just get off my ship. All right, all right Cassie. If if you mess with my hollow projectors again, I'm going to hang you up by your shebs, okay? <laughs> okay, stay off my ship. Um can I she can, just can I get my my tape no. back? No. Okay. No, you all can't right. get anything back. All right. I'm gonna space all your tapes. <laughs> Crouchy in the morning. He, he, he kind of like he slung, he kind of kind of slinks off. Um Normally she isn't this grouchy in the morning. She's not a morning person, but A, her ship is trashed, and B, she had a really, really scary dream, so... And C, she's not hungover, so she's got a lot of energy. <laughs> the uh, the dream and the being hungover and everything is, I think, all just made uh, Kamaya not ready to deal with that 
at the moment. So that's why she just walked past you as you were complaining and went into the house and is and is drinking coffee and um you know, uh Papa Saris is is making biscuits. Like I I imagine that uh most people are kind of used to her griping. Except for the teens and the kids who you know, the rest of them probably listen to her. Or don't listen to her, I should say. Ignore her. So, Remy, you're rolling out of bed. You bump your desk a little bit. Well, wait, are you, do, you, do you sleep in the office? you have your own place somewhere else? I have a place, yes. Okay. But I guess occasionally I may sleep here, like on the couch or something, but for the most part, no. I, I... Did you do that last night? Uh, Yeah, I probably did last night. Right. You roll out of the, the cot in the corner and, like... You know, you see on your little display, on your um, your computer, on your desk, there's like a few messages and stuff like that that are already there. Yeah. So what do you do in the morning? Go get some calf. Starbucks, of course. Uh, and I check the messages. There's a whole bunch of them. There's, you know, some noise disturbances. There's people saying that a vehicle left on somebody's lawn that they're not, you know, that they're mad about and... And up at the top, there's like 12 messages from Clive the Goat Farmer. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I start listening to him. Marshall, there's been something weird happening out here. The goats are all spooked. Uh, feels like there's some tremors from the, the plateau. If you come out and check it out, I don't know what the hell's happening. The goats are absolutely freaking out, Marshall. I don't know what's happening out here. It could be some of those sandstorm people. Getting their hands on that mining equipment again. I don't know what it is. Marshall, oh, this, it's shaking. And you can hear, like, rumbling in the background and stuff like that. And then it cuts out. All right. You're, you're mostly used to that kind of thing. It's it's Quest log updated. <laughs> <laughs> is this on the group quest log or just your personal one? Uh, I don't know. How, do, how does it work? Do I have to share it with you, or is it if one of, one of ours is updated, does it update all of them? Well, I will I tell know. you that no matter what you do, you all get experience at the same time. So even if you go do it by yourself, you can't you know, just monopolize on that. Well, I don't have... I mean, I guess I could commandeer one, but I don't have my speeder, right? Yeah, we left it somewhere. Yeah, it's, yeah. And I, we left the other one I, we took instead somewhere else, so... yeah. I think I think we left your speeder at um at, at one location that we went to uh, clear bandits out of, and then we took their speeders, and then we left those speeders by the um by the bunker. I think yeah, um, I think the crown right. vic is up the up front of the bunker too. It was now I oh, thought we yeah. left it. No, we left it somewhere else. Oh, did you? Because we wanted to, we wanted to look like we were part of the gang. Oh, we then it would be. Um, so it would have been a homestead. one of one of our homesteads, yep. one of the family. So maybe yep. somebody brought it to us. I'm gonna, you know what? Instead of maybe, <laughs> let's spend a let's spend a light side point. Okay. Boom. Uh, whichever cousin we left it with, they drove it over here last night as part of the party right. and left it here. Um, I don't know if it fits in our cargo hold. Uh, Joe and Annabelle, right? That's, that's our cousins. Joe, yeah, sure, that's Joe and Annabelle. I don't remember if it was their farm, but sure, Joe and Annabelle. Or or Janabelle, as we like to call them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Remy will, I guess, call Cassie to see if they can bring the speeder Yeah, you, 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 have a, you have a calm number. You guys, you know, you are the two that have been here, you know, you guys have interacted in the past. You can have her calm. So I do that. I try to call her. Yeah, to see if she, they could bring the speeder. It says, that's my ringer. That's kind of a boring ringer. Um, it's, you have it for the cop. For the, for the local cop. Well, I know, but he's my friend. <laughs> All right, what, um, what is it? Okay, what is, okay, what is your ringer then? <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm going to have to find a more exciting one for sure, though. You know, I fought the law and the law won, maybe. Um, but uh, eastbound and down from Smokey the Bandit. <laughs> <laughs> space bound and down um so yeah she's gonna she's you're gonna hear like a little shuffle of like you know the kind of person that connects to their phone but hasn't like hooked it up yet mm-hmm. and then she's, oh remy how you doing this morning it yeah, sounds doing like she's fine. doing something in the background listen uh i think i left my speeder at at one of your cousins uh 
if you think you could bring it over. Uh, I've been hearing some uh, disturbances with the... I got something I need to check out at the plateau. Sounds sure, like I there think... may be some uh, kind of tremor activity or something going on. I think there's room in the cargo bay. Yeah, you should probably deputize us. Hmm. I'm just uh, saying, maybe I we'd, should. We'd be useful. Plus, You'd probably I'd probably be more useful than a lot of the deputies I have right now. I'd look great with a badge. Um, <laughs> just saying. Uh, yeah. Well, how about uh, I've got your speeder right here, and we just load it up in the cargo bay and come get you. That sounds great. Because leaving the farm is the kind of thing I want to do today. All right, that sounds good. Just let okay. me know when. Uh, we'll be just, in here in, in like five minutes. So. All right, perfect. And then Cassie just hangs up at that. No, no sign off. That's how people do in in, in TV. Uh, <laughs> they don't it, know oh, ever says goodbye. Oh, it's totally rude. Um, but she's also like what twenty? You know, everything's okay. She's gonna then go over to the pilot's console and start warming up the engines. Okay. With the thought that this is the fastest way to get Kamaya back out here. <laughs> Kamaya, you hear that distinct, like, low rumble? She she comes out. Uh, she's got, uh, she's, still, she's still holding, like, a cup of calf in one hand and, like, you know, a giant, like, ho- homemade biscuit in the other one. And, and she, like, um, wanders on, what are, you, what are you doing? Are you taking the shit? Where does it go? She's in the cockpit, like, waving at you, like, come on over. <laughs> uh, Kamaya uh, still has not put on her shoes and and starts, like, walking over. She saunters. She does not, <laughs> uh, she does not hurry. She sips her calf. What? Uh, Remy needs us to deliver his speeder, because he's going to deputize us, and then we're going to go take care of some problem somewhere on the plateau. Uh, this early? Okay. It's, like, almost noon. <laughs> Yeah, I just woke up. That's not my fault. Also, are these your footprints? Yep, it looks like mine. Yeah, they look a lot like yours. That's pretty gross. Keep, could you keep your feet off the console? I was sleeping. Well, sleep without your feet on the console. Wait, where where is this feeder? Um, it's in the cargo hold. I guess I'll get my shoes. Hold on. Slowly walks back outside. Were, were, were her shoes on the ship, or did she leave them inside? Um, I, I already said that she grabbed her shoes and brought them oh, inside okay. when right. she walked, when she left. So she has to go back in. Do, do me um, do me a perception. Me? Yeah. Okay, what's the difficulty? Uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be, uh, just, it's going to be easy. Give me an easy one. Okay. Wait, have you had all your calf yet? Um, she is like, one black she's die. like, she's like three quarters of the way through her calf. One black die. Yeah. She's you, totally okay. get a black die. New, new rule. Over. When your characters wake up until you have finished your first calf, you get a black die to everything. <laughs> so is it an extra black die for being hung over? Are you hung over? Totally oh, hung definitely hung over. Two black, <laughs> Two black die. <laughs> oh, Wait, sorry. how, 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 how Irish is Thanks, your coffee? Claire. How Irish is your calf? It's, it's only a little Irish. Okay. One black die. One black die. <laughs> Really? Yeah, one black die. Do I have three black dice right now? No, no, I meant like it took one away. <laughs> okay, it took one back yeah. down. So now back to yeah. one black die. Yeah. Hair, hair of the Sith that bit you. Right. Oh, am I going to have to fly this thing? <laughs> um, what the hell? <laughs> I got... I somehow managed two successes, two threats, and a triumph. Okay, so I'm going to... So what happens, you know? So what you notice... Is that so? There's this little pocket of cousins off to the side near like the wood pile, and you hear like a little conversation. It's like, you know, it's like, no, this is my new dog. It's like, that's the the butt ugliest dog I've ever seen. No, he's he's cute, he's butt ugly, and that's how I know it's yours because you're butt ugly. Nah, there's like three, there's, there's like there's a little girl with like this big bundle of towels around this little thing, and then like there's two boys that are. Sam, you know, poop talking the 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 look of this of the new pet. Um, uh, threats. All right, let me think. Uh, uh, okay, and and then you notice that there's a second cousin like running off to the side of the building with another bundle in her in, in her arm too. 
So the the, mm-hmm. the one is like, let's say like 10 years old, and the one that ran around the side of the house with a bundle and out of sight is 14. As, as, as she goes by... Uh, she she addresses one of the one of the boys that's like making fun of it, and it's like, "Hey, Dave, uh, your mama wanted you home. You wet the bed again last night." It did not. <laughs> he wet the bed. Shut up! And like the one kid like punches the other in the shoulder. Oh, better get running. So you better run, bedwetter. Shut up! Both little boys walk away. And it's a little girl that has little girl. the yeah. that has all wrapped up. Has has tightly burritoed her new little pet. Hey, Jane, what you got there? His his name is Sparkles. <laughs> you want to see, you want... see it? Yeah, you look down and it's the it's a, it's, a, it's a medical mouser droid, and you see it's kind of like sputtering. So the front maw, where it's the four angular kind of teeth thing, are like not really working, and it's gyrating kind of like partly. So. Uh, where, where'd you get that, Jen? Found it. Did you find it on our ship? I don't know. Found it on a ship. Do you know it's not nice to take people's stuff? It's not stuff. His name's Sparkles. Okay, Sparkles, Sparkles was mine. He was on, he was on my ship. You need to give him back. R- roll me persuasion. Okay. What's the difficulty? <laughs> uh, what's the difficulty of persuading a petulant child to give you their new pet? I can't use charm, can I? You'd have to convince me on how it's gonna to be, how you're gonna do it. Because well, you know, because persuasion by itself isn't the same thing. It would be, have to be like charm or coercion. Um, uh, she's she's kind of going with the route of like, it's like, oh, well, you know, this this wasn't this wasn't yours. <laughs> so you're gonna try you, to reason gonna with the child, the ten year old. Uh, reasoning yeah. with the ten year old is gonna be three. Reasoning with a ten year old is three. Yeah. Got it. I, I, I hear, like, I hear like no who, objections. This isn't yours. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll go with it. Whatever. And don't forget, you haven't finished your coffee. I haven't finished my coffee. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, yep. I succeed with a threat and another triumph. Okay. Okay. You're gonna you're gonna take care of him. I'll take good care of him. Okay. He likes he he likes he likes warm bantha milk, and his name is Mister Sparkles. All right. Okay. Thank you for taking care of Mr. Sparkles she's, for me. She's a really big frowny face. Just hmm, okay. Hands you the bundle. And and then I tell her I use I use my um triumph to to tell her now Mr. Sparkles, you know, he's he uh really likes having all of his uh <laughs> like he, he really likes you know, he's got a nice big family mm-hmm. and, and he needs to have all of his friends with him. Now did any other <laughs> uh, did any other of his family uh, come off of our ship? Because they're going to be real sad if uh, if they can't uh, be together again. Janine Janine has Mister Sparkle's brother, but but you know I don't know where she went. All right, I think I saw Janine running off that way. Can you go get her for me? I'll I'll go I'll I'll, I'll go, go try and find her. Uh, Cassie, you look out the front of the window and you see Kamaya <laughs> just like hanging out with like and talking to this kid. totally not getting her shoes and hurrying the hell up she she tells her uh she'll she'll give her five credits if uh if she can if she gets uh mr sparkle's brother back for her yay little 10 year old scampers away uh, she she begins to continue her way back to the house uh, slowly, you know, still slowly walking. You know, goes in, uh, chugs chugs the last of her calf, puts her boots on. She's she's not hurrying. <laughs> uh, we're gonna have to install an air horn. I just think. <laughs> um, I, I'm gonna assume that um, her her cousin hasn't little cousin hasn't come back yet. Not yet. No, it's gonna take a little bit of time. Okay. Um she'll she'll come on. So she comes back. She's um you know uh she's she's finished her calf. She's brought a second. She's brought like two more cups of calf. And you're holding um, the bundle? And the bundle. Okay. Yeah. Hands a cup to uh Cassie and then shows her what uh, and shows her the bundle. Look what Jen had. It has it calf? Has- oh, oh. 
Oh. Janine's um, got another one. She sips her second cup of calf. And you're going to drink calf. Should I not drink calf? She, she puts the calf down. And she, can, can I see the bundle? Did you give, yeah, she gives it to you. She puts it on the ground, reaches over for her big stick, <laughs> and just <laughs> takes the end of it and just keeps smashing it down into the thing until it's just a pile oh, of junk. Oh, you're, you're, you're going to break Jen's little heart. Aww. It actually I'm is... I'm going to take it outside. <laughs> it... She, she named it Mr. Sparkles. Yeah, well, Mr. Sparkles is going to try to eat your arm off. You could have tried to deprogram it. Yes, and I could put my hand into the, the fertilizer machine, but I'm not going to do it. And she gets she takes her stick and wanders off the ship. And goes looking for Janine. Hey, wait, I got I got Jen getting it. Uh huh. Uh huh. And when Jen comes I, back missing her arm, I thought you I thought you were worried we'll about this Marshall thing. We'll take her to thing. the doctor. I am worried about that, but this is kind of more important. Oh, oh, she stops and comes back and puts the um, the cup of calf down by the co-pilot's console very carefully. So it's there when she comes back, mm-hmm. and then she turns and goes again. Uh, Cam will sigh and follow. You go to around the side of the house. There's a little bitty like creek you know, that runs alongside of it, and you see a ten year old like stamping their feet, trying to convince a fourteen year old to you know give something up. Oh hey, what what do you want? I want my stuff back. I mean your stuff. There's no stuff here. Uh huh. What's in the bundle? It's mine. No, it's not. It's a whole it's bundle mine. of mine. It's not a bundle of yours. And I will drown you if you don't give it back right now. <laughs> that sounds like a coercion <laughs> role. But totally. But this is, you know, family and that kind of thing. Um, <laughs> it's deception, maybe, because I'm not actually going to drown her. <laughs> I skip no, three. that's oh, totally wow. a coercion role. I'll use coercion. Yeah, go for it. But how difficult is it? Uh, let's see. To scare a 14 year old i'm gonna say like i'm gonna say two have you had your calf today i've had my calf today that was my second cup of calf there you go I drink it. <laughs> you don't so. get a blue dye till your third cup okay well, I, I, I might, so. <laughs> we're about to we're about to all pick up new obligations becoming drug addicts to okay. calf <laughs> well, apparently she runs and gets my mom but i do get the bundle from her okay and whatever the disadvantage actually does. So you I walk up, you're like, you know, glaring at her. You threaten to drown her in the freaking creek that's behind her. And she just kind of like <laughs> massive, like eyes, like saucer eyes. And, and, and you like, when she, as she's frozen, you go and reach for it and you grab it. And she just kind of sits there. And one of the long tendrils um, <clears throat> from the mouse, we call them bat droids. I forget what we call them. Uh, medical bat droid things like pull a line across her forearm and she screams and she's oh my god and, and she pulls she pulls like it away so it can't like cut her anymore and she start, the, the two kids start running away. Ah! the kids start running away oh, see this this is what happens when you let a kid keep the droid she says as she walks past Kamaya back towards the ship Kam- Kamaya lets her grouch <laughs> Walks walks with her again, continues to drink her calf. She's been pretty chill about it. She's feel she's starting to feel better. She's had her, you know, she's she's had her calf. She's been awake for a few minutes. A uh, scary dream is fading. Cassie's like clearly she's angry. Like, she's like so <clears throat> deputies, huh? Um, yeah, I asked about it, um, and I ran all the pre flight checklist, so it's complied with. You can double check. Um, so the ship's ready to go. Yeah. Um, and, and this this is great because this means that I have an excuse not to help out with the nerfs. Um, oh, I because I got a new job. We're, we're we're not asked to do that. We're not we're not given permission to leave the farm. I didn't ask. I mean, the law needs us, right? And she puts yeah. the the second droid down and takes her her staff and wails the hell out of it like long past it being smashed she keeps smashing it this one was mm-hmm. this one was fully functional and it like starts to try and like just, like pull away and then as you smash it like the back end of it it starts to drag the rest of it with it and it does that little mount uh, uh brand me that mouse mouse or droid sound again please da, 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 da. yeah it just like like slowly like 
That's what, um, that's what you do. I, I, I wrap them both up into a single bit of cloth. Yeah. And then I take the sack and smash it against the ground a couple more times. <laughs> so, perfect. Perfect. And then I go, I go over to like a cabinet that it looks like it's random, but it's actually like a storage cabinet. She slides open the panel, puts it all in there, slides it closed. It and calmly sits down and grabs her grabs her calf. You notice it does ooze like your your bundle of smashed droid. Uh, it does ooze a little bit of purple. Yeah, but that's probably not uh, reactive. And besides, it's a cabinet. Yeah, yeah. it'll stay in there. Yeah, um, <clears throat> that's why scientists and... use cabinets so they won't react. To exactly, exactly. <laughs> so, and I just she's she's actually very upset about that whole thing and is just like determined at this point to ignore it mm-hmm. so so it's out of sight out of mind you know Kamaya sits down in the uh, pilot's chair she, she's got her boots and pair of jeans on or um, or probably like uh, or maybe like some kind of baggy like a cargo pant kind of thing and the top half you know since she's woken up she's been rebandaged and it's and it's kind of you know it goes it's like wrapped around her her chest and her shoulders uh she's got kind of like a tube top thing going cool um, kind of so you know it's not like it's not gonna no there's no straps to like put pressure on any of the parts that are really kind of hurting so it's you know shrugged off the the jacket that she had re reruns the checks uh, for a minute, just to just to make sure and get more familiar with the ship and uh, sets up going. So where where are we going? Oh, I put the waypoint in. Uh, we're gonna go pick up Remy. <laughs> There's a little flag on the top of the Navcom computer. It's it's the main right. Marshall station. They've got their own private landing pad. I I fly there. <clears throat> space travels fast. Moving within an atmosphere is a little slower, even though it's still a spaceship. So you you know you get there. In a few minutes, Marshall, you hear a little bit of ruckus on the street as people are talking about seeing a weird ship. You know, it's a small town. You know, everyone everyone knows what everyone else's ship and cars and all that kind of stuff looks like. And when you see anything different, they're a little like, "The heck is that?" Yeah, um, your Uber has arrived. Yeah, when I when I uh, kind of hear him or see him, I I go out and just walk, just get on the ship. <laughs> Yeah. Walk up the- you you mm-hmm. feel you feel like thirty percent more badass walking up this ramp of this you know red track lighting like pretty boss ship. Is his duster like oh curling yeah. behind him as he walks? Oh in yeah, cool there's, there's there's a whole like there's that whole thing where it's totally not for sta- not not for like stage hands with fire extinguishers like you see the the CO two coming off of the bottom of the ship and stuff and. You know, furling your your jacket, tails, and stuff like that. Oh, you look awesome! Oh yeah, on the ship. And then we cut to a close up that's just like his feet, just like his boots stomping along, and it follows him as it pulls back a little bit, yeah. and he, he goes walking mm-hmm. on to the uh, the cockpit. Morning, <laughs> ladies. Morning, Marshall. Hi, Remy. Ah, oh, we didn't bring you calf. I'm sorry, we didn't bring you calf. Oh uh, no, I had some already. <laughs> So what do you think? You want to take this out to the plateau? <laughs> I I don't know. Maybe we should just leave it here. <laughs> and, and she she looks over at Kamaya with an obviously joking look on her face. Yeah, that no, that laugh was in character, and okay. she like you know she like pulls the lever to um to pull back the ramp and close it and and take back off. Some people are just stubborn, so I guess we'll have to take the ship. Darn. <laughs> yeah. It's a rough life we have. Uh, he walks up and straps himself into the uh, the third chair. I did get a uh, message from that Republic guy that was there to see me. Uh, apparently they want me to, to meet him um, off planet somewhere. Really? Yeah. What for? I don't know. They said they uh, they need to talk to me about about something going on. It wasn't uh, too clear, but I think it's obviously important. And I got the impression they really wanted to talk to me in person. Mm, if only we had a ship. I didn't know uh, if that would be something y'all would be interested in. Uh, what? Leaving the planet? It, Us? No. Don't be crazy. I, 
Mm, can't say I'd be sad to leave the planet again, but um, you know, what, where where is this? What does he want? I mean, is there any reason that like what, what kind of uh, association do you have with with the Republic that they'd want to call you up on this? I don't know. I was. Uh... They weren't really too clear. They or just said super they super spy thing. They weren't really clear about it. Just said they had some questions and and things that they thought I could I could help them out with. So I don't know. I, like I said, it, it was it was a little cryptic, but uh, it sounded important. I mean, if there's something we can do to help the Republic, I we'll tell them up. where we're supposed to be going. Okay. How far is it? Um, hold on. And I pull it up on the old astrogation map and hmm. find out. Boop, boop, boop. Uh, your thing does not show that space station. Uh, you can't find the system, though. And Good enough. The, the I'll find the system. We should probably get some supplies and stuff before we head out. But let's see if we can figure out what's going on at this plateau first. Okay. Yeah, because uh, there are no snacks left on this ship. Oh, he... <sighs> Of course they did. <laughs> she says knowingly. <laughs> oh, not anymore? Of course they did. Oh, oh no. They, we definitely ate all of the snacks uh, last except night. Except for, there's a, whole, there's a whole bunch of, like, corn nuts, because no one likes those. No one likes them. Who Why did the... you even bring those? It's corn nuts and black licorice. That's all it is. I, I, I didn't. Somebody else put that on board. Who like, would be? Who would bring corn nuts and black licorice on our ship? This, uh, you know, you know, it'd be Rooster. The Cirrus clan are like squirrels; like they'll take something but they have to replace it. You know, it was Rooster. Rooster loves corn nuts, or at least he says he does. You never see him eating any, but he's always buying it. So we, you know, at, I assume at this point we have, you know, we're, we're get, approaching the plateau. Yep. So the Atheon, you know, goes through. It's you know. Um, a player character said that it was around noon, so let's say it's about like you know twelve thirty now to one o'clock. Um, going through, and something weird starts to happen um, from uh, from a pilot's. Actually, you guys have somebody on every console right now, pretty much. So mm-hmm. you actually see that there's this weird interaction going on. You, your artificial gravity's off, but you're getting these weird jumps in perceived gravity from the planet and you actually can see this weird rumble happening in the ground you see dust start to kick up from every like square inch of the planet around you not super high but enough yeah you're perceiving an earthquake pretty much from a plane so it's very weird you're disconnected from it but you can see the effects of it happening um are earthquakes a normal thing that happen around where we live sorry planet quakes um, moon quakes. It's a moon. Sure. Um, it's a moon. Yeah. I keep forgetting it's a moon. Uh, it's, it's a moon. No, um, no, not really. Do so. So not a lot of tectonic activity nope. normally. Whoa, what is going on down there? Um, hold on. Let me put on the artificial gravity. Boom. That at least evened it out for us. Um, this is really weird. Um, let me see if it's I changing can... the gravity. Let's let me see if I can make some sort of sensors roll to find out. Yep, go for it. There isn't a sensors per se, so computers. 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 I like the computers as everything. Uh, old, um, old computer, so one black die. And your sensors are pretty dang good, and you are in short range. So let's say let's say a moderate. This is a weird thing. I wish I'd got the OS updated. <laughs> nope. A failure. A, a single threat. threat. A single so, threat. Now I got nothing. The, uh, the uh, artificial gravity stopped working. Yep. Artificial gravity's <sighs> off right now. Until it is repaired. Ah, oh, the graph plates are offline. Yep. Oh, well. Hold on, Did you lunch. break the artificial gravity? If I broke my artificial gravity, that would be on me. All right? So, the Atheon keeps flying towards the plateau, and if this were an 80 mo- 80s movie, it would be a beautiful miniature set you would see coming up to it, and you see this large kind of, you know, plateau, this, you know... That's been there and has always been, you know, the exact same way since you guys were children. And can, can we have it be like '60s style, to where you can see the strings on us and we kind of? Oh us? yeah, oh yeah, I love Dune. With, so, with absolutely. like sparklers coming out of the engines. No, 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 no. We are not Plan Nine from outer space. We're not. <laughs> I'm, I'm not that level of no. Like, yeah. okay. So 
you're, the Atheon comes in and you see the plateau where, um, what was his name? Not Steve. I want to say Steve. Clive. It was Clive. Clive, yeah. Clive the goat herder. He's always lived up there. He loves raising his goats on that plateau. It's fantastic. You look there and you see that the plateau has like shifted, like it sands a little bit. So it's actually a little lower and sloping down at the edges. And you see this massive blackened durasteel cone shape jutting out from it at about 14, 15 degree angle coming out from the top of the, the, the plateau. And then you see it again, this wave of vibration come out and you feel the, the ship actually drops down about 30 feet all of a sudden when this wave hits and everything sinks down. You can see the edge of the plateau sink again. My calf. One of the edges. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> everyone's calf. Roll your calf. Roll, roll, roll athletics for calf. Roll athletics to save your calf. What's the difficulty? I didn't have any at this point. You didn't have any? No. Oh, well, no, you have calf. It's just inside of you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you still have to roll. Nope, my calf's all over the place. Okay. <laughs> but, I, I saved my calf, but, but I spilled a little bit yeah. on... Um, no, no, the foam top is gone. The foam top is yeah, gone. Foam. Yeah. You're, you're, everyone's, like, really startled. The ship dropped a bit, like it was like a pocket of turbulence. It's very, very weird. It's messing up some of the subsystems. It wasn't prepared for it. But you're coming up to it. I'd say you're about 200 feet above it and about, like, 500 feet away from it. And then you see these, like, shifting things within the, I want to say earth, <laughs> inside the rock and dirt around coming out of the plateau. And you see these these flat paneled th- uh, objects that are about the size of a tie. And you see them kind of scurry out and then sail through the air and then wrap around the edge of the object that's jutting out of the plateau. It bends around and then... Uh, two of them swoop around, grab onto the side of the object jutting out of the plateau. And then everyone is blinded by this brilliant white hot light. You guys are pretty far away looking through clear durasteel panels <laughs> and you are blinded for a moment as two pinpoints of light bloom out to a star's strength and then start to calm down and you see that they're actually like engine propulsions coming from those two objects that have latched onto the jetting structure and you see it start to shift and move and the structure is moving more and more out out of the dirt thanks for listening by the way blasterheads we're gonna have some pretty big news coming up here in the near future yes even bigger than our new art and our very own youtube channel To make sure you stay up to date on everything that's going on, follow us on Facebook or Twitter at No Match Podcast. If you enjoyed our podcast, please leave us a review on iTunes. No Match for a Blaster is a podcast by Morality Plays. Star Wars, Edge of the Empire, Age of Rebellion, and Forced in Destiny are made by Fantasy Flight Games and Lucas Books. Our theme song is by Kevin McLeod, sound effects by Tristan Lundgren, Vindus, and Akmahov. And as always, I would absolutely love to thank my amazing players, Brandon playing Remy Drobash, Claire playing Cassie Saris, and Bobby playing Kamaya Saris. Well, that's our episode for this week, Tauntauns and Padawans, but I'll see you next time in a galaxy far, far away. <laughs>